To win an endurance race, it's like a whole championship in one race. You have to go out and you have to attack every stint as if it's your first. Riding a motorbike, you use every muscle known to man. But the Nürburgring, also known as the Nordschleife, is probably the most difficult race on earth. In the motorsport world, this is the race that you have to finish and try to win. Not even 10 years after the car was first invented, there was the first car race. And what a race. 1,100 kilometers from Paris to Bordeaux, as hell for man as for machine. Some of the most famous motor races in the world are endurance races, like Mille Miglia, 1,000 miles on public roads the length of Italy. It provided Sterling Moss with arguably his greatest win. If you're a racing driver, <laughs> you love doing crazy things. You, know, you have to start out realizing that the danger is, is addictive. Endurance is not always on asphalt and not always on four wheels. The Dakar Rally is hardcore for both car drivers and motorcyclists. The toughest endurance track races each year are the Le Mans 24 hours for motorbikes and the 24 hours of the Nürburgring for cars. Racing for a full day and a full night with two or three other teammates to share the burden is about the only thing two and four wheel endurance races have in common over their 24 hour marathons. Racing at Le Mans is gritty Aussie biker, Josh Hook. And racing at the old Nürburgring is ex Grand Prix driver, Tiago Montero. How would I explain endurance racing to a non-fan? I think that it's not relying on one person, so you've got multiple drivers or riders. You've got traffic and issues happening, you've got oil spillages, you've got flags, you've got night time, you've got lights. It's an ongoing, uh, evolving excitement picture. I would say that it's the biggest human challenge you will see face to face because the difficulty of the drivers, the, the, the tiredness, the stress, the, the fear sometimes that you can see on our faces. Then you see the tiredness and the hard efforts and work of the mechanics. And then you see the, the dramas of the mechanical failures that will happen almost all the time. I think fear is definitely a factor on this track, more so than on a conventional circuit because the margin between a fast lap and, and crashing is, is often very, very fine. And certainly in a four-man team, you feel the responsibility for all your teammates. 24 hours is such a long time. Even if you just stay awake and do nothing for 24 hours, it's hard work. I think we are doing eight or nine stints each. You know, the concentration is so difficult to keep because you are so tired and exhausted and the level that you're riding at is so high mentally and physically. It destroys you and it, it does make it hard, but um, that's what we signed up for, that's what we're here to do. Le Mans is probably the most famous 24-hour uh, race uh, in the public, but the Nürburgring, also known as the Nordschleife, uh, is probably the 24-hour race that you want to win, that you want to finish. Just to finish it is already uh, a huge achievement. So this is probably why all the race car drivers want to be there. The Nordschleife is probably the most challenging, the most difficult race on earth. A crazy long 25 kilometers racetrack with bumps, with different tarmacs, with 20 something blind corners. So Jackie Stewart famously gave this place the name of the Green Hell, and it's stuck ever since. And, and that is because it is just quite literally that. I mean, back when he was racing Formula One rounds here, those guys, they didn't have any of the safety that, that we have today that we take for granted. We use the Honda Type R and uh, we develop it to a racing car. 
the road car is already a very sporty car and very close to a racing car. The main thing is we have to strip it down to lose as much weight as possible. Then we upgrade the engine to have a bit more power. We put a, a special racing gearbox, a better brakes, of course, for the racing scene. It's a completely new CBR1000 Honda. This is the first model in quite some time where there has been a significant change. It's definitely a step forward, you know, the, the power and the chassis from a standard spec bike is better than anything I've ever ridden before, let alone turning it into a superbike and making improvements that way. So I think the bike is capable of winning races, no doubt about that. You can feel now the emotion coming, you know, the tension, the pressure, even though I'm not taking the starts. You are in, at the Norse life, it's never safe to race here, even when it's dry and hot. But obviously these conditions make it worse. While we are running, we have to be safest being fast at the same time. We want to repeat the, the win of last year. We are the champions and we want to do it. So yeah, we, we're ready for it. The race gets underway. Lights go green. So the race start in Le Mans, generally speaking, we have a lot of people on the start grid. They do the national anthem, they've got fireworks going off, and as a rider, that really pumps you up for the race. There is nothing like that, but obviously this year without the spectators, we didn't have any of that. So they do a countdown, five minutes, one minute, and then 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and so on. Then the flag drops and you have to sprint to your bike, and the bike is turned off at the time, so you have to start the bike and then take off. It's unique to endurance and, and that's what we love about it. It's important for us to get away quickly and get out of the traffic because we've got 64 bikes on the grid. It's hard enough riding with that throughout the whole race, let alone if you get caught back in it on the first lap where everyone's bunched up, so it's important to, to get away quickly. If you can get a lead in the first laps and control the race, control the pace, and this is the, what we aim for. Usually we do a full tank of fuel as long as that goes for. So generally speaking, around an hour per stint. Then we'll go out, we'll do our hour, we'll come back and we'll have two hours off. We've got to be in the box about 10 minutes before they're due to stop, just in case you know they're using more fuel or they have to pit stop early for any, any unknown reason. Uh, your teammate will box and immediately he jumps off the bike. They put new tyres front and rear and 24 litres of fuel generally takes about 10 seconds is probably a good time for a pit stop from the point where the rider gets off the bike with the bike stopped, he gets off, they put tyres, fuel and the other rider jumps on and takes off. This is a 25 kilometres long racetrack but 2.5 kilometres are straight and flat out and during that time which is probably at least 45 seconds, one minute or something like this, you can kind of stretch and relax your arms because you spend the next eight minutes really gripped to the steering wheel and tense and no time to breathe at all. I'm sure that for us it feels really hard and probably the hardest race that we do. But if you compare to a bike, obviously it must be so much easier. So when a biker comes to a car, he feels safe, he feels secure, it feels easy physically for them. So they have a very different approach to risk and danger and, and effort. Bikes are more difficult because there's that added element of danger where you make one little slight mistake or you might bump into somebody or passing them and you can easily have an off. And obviously you go into the dirt and the gravel and you don't, when you fall off, you fall off. It's all over. So cars, if you have a mistake and you do spin out, sometimes you can come back on. Uh, and with no damage, except you lose a bit of time. So motorcycles is the more critical and the more difficult and the more physical endurance element between the two sports. So our race tactic is to start the race and try and get some fresh air. When we achieve that, then we can control the race. This is important because 
we've, we've built that buffer in the early stages and our job is to maintain that or build it, get the gap bigger if we feel comfortable. Be careful, the trick is very, very slippery. Very slippery. It was fun. Actually, very fun. Because, well, I started quite wet, on the, and the car balance felt great, and then the, tri, the track got drier and drier, but the balance was still good, so I was able to really push more and more, overtaking some really faster cars. They were struggling a lot, so it's enjoyable when you feel that you're confident and you're fast. Uh, yeah, I really had fun. When you race a 24 hour race, your whole body hurts. On the Friday practice, I had a crash. I broke the two metatarsals in the right foot. It wasn't a bad break, but it was still a fracture. And um, for me, it was, it was so painful to, to do. I mean, I couldn't walk. This is where uh, our physios play a massive part. You know, we, we come off the bike and every stint something else hurts, something else is, is wrong with the body and they turn around and fix it and out you go again for another, another stint. A racing driver needs to be a really good athlete. The drivers are responsible for the rest. They need to take care about taking coffees or sweets because we will need to use this kind of stimulants for the right hours and we check everything when they finish the stint. We check the hydration levels. Sometimes we put them in the, the scale to see the weight, how they change before and after the stint to control the hydration levels. And in the physical part also, we do some warm-ups before and some recovery work after the stints and then they go to rest and be ready for the next stint. I like riding in the night. It's generally cooler. The track temperature comes down a little bit so we have more grip. The bike's easier to make the lap time because we have more grip. The engine runs better because the air is cooler and the engine seems to, to like that more as well. Obviously you can't see much because it's dark. I mean, with the speeds that we're going and we're full lean angle one way, full lean angle the other way, the light's never in the right position but you've done that many laps around that place and you're in the zone, let's say it just becomes effortless. You break in the same spot, you open the gas in the same spot, you end up doing the same lap time, if not faster in the night time, just because we have more grip in the engine, it's got more performance at that point. I raced my first Le Mans uh, late 90s. The night was a big challenge because you couldn't see. You're still going at 350 kilometers per hour, and, but you don't see more than you know 80 meters. Uh, so you're driving blind, uh, really. Nowadays, we have amazing lights on the cars. The problem is the others. The lights are so strong that they blind you, uh, and then you blind the others, and etc., etc. So they're good for you, but they're not good for, for the other racers around. So the technology has evolved. It has helped us to be safer, to be also faster at night. Normally we'd be doing this in May with six hours of darkness and we're going to have almost double that amount of night driving. And it's like driving into a, an abyss, you know, this kind of black hole. There's just nothing else there. They decided to stop the race uh, because of the heavy rain and the fog on, on some place, of even the, the track limits you could not see. And uh, I said on the radio, it's, Guys, it's, it's really risky and it's really hard to drive now. Even when you get passed by another car, even by a GT3 car with a Venturi in the back, the spray is so big. These cars, when, the, when there's so much water, you see nothing for the next, you can say, 20 seconds. We're getting into early hours in the morning now and the riders are tired. We have to try and sleep. Um, we have to try and get a little bit of rest if you can because it, we know that that's going to help us in the long run when the sun starts to come up and, and we've only got a few hours to go. We, it's important to be strong at the end of the race just in case something does happen or we've got a, we've got a battle on our hands for the win. We know we're getting that one step closer. We're in the, we're in the final stage of, of the race, let's say. 
let's just keep riding how we've been riding all night. It's been flawless and um, we have to try and carry that momentum to the finish. Back in the pit lane, the teams start to prepare for the resumption of the 24 hours of the Nürburgring. The suspension was the seventh in the history of the 24-hour race, this time for nine hours, and 90 of the 97 starters were still running. We're leading, but the, the other car is nine minutes behind. It's, it seems a lot, but it's not that much here. It's less than a lap, so we have to push. Usually at this time of the day, we are kind of managing the situation and see where we are. Because of the new situation, we have to really push until the end for now. Uh, to try to keep a gap. We're now that close to the finish and we know that we've got this, this lead and um, our team was consistently checking the times of the P2, P3, P4 guys and you know we're just trying to maintain that gap but the stress that builds on us around that because we are so close to the victory but you know you get thoughts in your head about problems in the pit or something happening to the bike and it's it's difficult at that point in time to stay so focused but we've got these guys chasing us down and uh, and it really is stressful at that point. Mike gets shown the last lap board and we're all on the pit wall hanging over the edge cheering him on and it's so stressful and it seems like the longest lap in for everyone and to see him come across the line was amazing. Words can't describe how excited everyone is. Our hard work has paid off. We, we're just so emotional at that point in time. As a young kid from rural New South Wales, to win this race means everything to us. It's a dream come true. And we made it, you know, two tries, two wins. We are the endurance masters now. It was an amazing team, amazing four drivers. We were strong, you know, we, we avoided all the risks, all the big uh, t tricks on the track. It's good, no, it feels very good. It was an amazing team job and I'm very proud of them. We all worked hard. It was not an easy night as you, as you saw, but nevertheless, always difficult and challenging here. I have a huge respect for, for two wheels, for the riders. I mean, I, I love motorbikes, I know how hard it is. It's probably much harder actually to sustain 24 hours on a bike. It's two different worlds, definitely, both very hard, but I mean, the risks they take and the endurance they need is quite another level.